Around 500,000 people die every year at the moment and of um, the people who are in hospital, 90% of them would rather die at home. But at the moment, around 50% of us die in an institution, which means we don't often get the death that we would like. We commissioned some independent research and 98% of people said that they want their wishes known and they would like them honoured. 95% of people said that they want to have more access, just simply to have access to more information. And 93% of people said they want to talk more about their wishes. So we're hoping that this film will help us do that and we're going to talk to some professionals who work in different aspects of the industry and we'll talk to some individuals and they can share their experience of talking about death and dying. Well, it can be really important to be able to have some conversations as people approach the end of their life. Um, sometimes people can be isolated, um, but also as health and social care professionals we're often wanting to try and provide people with the sorts of care and services that they want. And that can be really hard to do if you can't have a conversation about what it is that people actually want. There's quite a lot of evidence to show that if we're not able to have these conversations, then the outcomes for people can be less good. They may not get the care they want. They have less chance of getting the care in the place that they'd like to get that care. So it's a really important thing to try and get to grips with where it's possible to plan ahead. And really, if, if we don't talk, then we can't plan. My name is Gemma and I have two daughters and my younger daughter, who is three and a half, has a life-limiting condition. We had to initiate um, the conversations with our consultant to ask the questions about what did the condition mean for Kira, what did it mean for us, what could and should we expect. Um, and the consultant was very vague with what we should expect with regards to um, length of length of life which at the time was very frustrating, but I now understand why, given that Kira is now three and a half and has defied what we would have expected. I would say as hard as it is and as difficult as it is to face the reality of what's ahead, our take on it has been if, you know, Kira, has, Kira will have a short life, we know that, she's, she's survived longer than we thought she was going to, um, but the most important thing for us has been to, to face that reality, to acknowledge that that is going to happen. It's going to happen sooner than anybody wants it to. But you, you live life to the full. You give her a full and happy short life. And that with regards to end of life, not shying away from it, speaking to people about it, um, kind of feel that you plan for everything else that you do in life. You need to plan for this as well. And with regards to the end of life plan, having that done, having that written is a way in a, in a filing cabinet somewhere. I know it's there and I know when the time comes, I can spend my time with Kira and not be concerned about anything else. Something for people to think about uh, towards the end of their lives. Um, it can also be about thinking ahead at different points in your life. Maybe that if you've just had children, you may be for the first time thinking, hmm, I wonder if I should sit down and make a will. Um, and it's, it may be something for us to think about at a time, perhaps uh, if we've got ageing parents and relatives, we want to try and talk to them and find out what sort of care and support they might want if their condition gets worse. So it's something for everybody, really. Well, talking about death, well, actually, talking about death first came up for me uh, when my parents mentioned it to us and, and um, I've got an older sister who's uh, disabled and my parents care for her. Well, she's she care for her pretty much full time. So as they get older um, and they're both retired now, one of the things that they had said was, listen, you know, when we, um, when we die, you know, we'd like this, that and the rest for her. Uh, We'd like you to be able to care for um, uh, your sister, or not so much you'd be able to care for her, but that you'll be able to put something in place for it. Past year I've got married, and, um, I, and my wife's just had a baby girl, so all of that um, really brought home the need to sort of to plan and, and to, uh, to put things in place because now we're responsible for somebody else. And, and maybe it is in that being responsible for somebody else that it's easier for us to, um, it is easier for us to uh, talk about it a bit because there's a need to and it's, 
you know, if, I don't know, I think if I wasn't in that position, I maybe would have delayed it further. We all plan for different stuff and, it, and it's just that this shouldn't be any different. Mm. Um, and, and as I said, you know, when, when you can sort of, when there's a different focus or you're doing it for someone else or something like that, then you, you can just treat it, not totally dispassionately, but you can kind of approach it more evenly, maybe, and that makes it easier. So, yeah, do it now.